A few months ago, we released a video where we suspended some fruit in the air, and a lot of you said you wanted to see how we edited the photos. So today, I'm gonna to show you how. If you wanna follow along with this video, we've included a link in the description to download some of the photos. They're JPEGs that just have the color grade applied to them so you can practice doing wire removal, extending the background, and just touching up the fruit. We're working with the CC 2019 version of Adobe Photoshop. Don't worry if you don't have the latest version, you can still follow along and do just about everything that we'll be doing today. A quick thanks to LG for sponsoring this video. I'm using their 4K ultra fine monitor hooked up to my MacBook Pro to help me edit. So for this first example, I'm gonna remove this fishing line that's holding up the top half of this pineapple. And there's a few different tools we can use to remove it. I'm gonna start with the healing brush. I'm just gonna increase the size a little bit. With the healing brush tool, you need to select a source for your brush. So I'm just gonna to go to the left of this fishing line, hold Option or Alt and click. And now it's gonna pull from that white crosshair. As you can see, it's doing a really good job removing this with no problem. Now, another tool we can use that's similar is just the spot healing brush tool. And that works similarly, except you don't have to select your source. You can click and drag and start removing and Photoshop will do its best to just find areas to sample. And right now it's using content aware to remove that wire. So either way, whatever method works best for you, you can use. So now we need to remove the fishing line that goes right by these pineapple leaves. And so I'm gonna start by drawing um, a mask with the lasso tool right over here. I'm gonna go right up to the edge of the leaf and just like that. And now I can just use the clone stamp tool right here and lower the size of that and select my source area by holding Option or Alt and then painting over that. And then we can also just clean up any edges that look weird. That's looking pretty good. Now we need to keep working away. Um, we can see the fishing line going down over here. Um, these leaves over here are kind of dead anyway, so I think I'm just gonna remove this whole area. So I'm just gonna select all this with the lasso tool. And so now we can try a variety of different methods to clean this up and just have it be the pink background. Just start with the clone stamp tool again since we have a nice solid background. It should work well. Even that looks pretty good, but um, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and remove that. And then zoom out just to make sure everything's looking okay. All right, not bad. Now we can continue to clean up this fishing line. Usually um, I found that the, the clone stamp tool works best. We have a lot of different textures and uh, different leaves moving different directions. So you might have to use a variety of different tools like um, the spot healing brush and the clone stamp to get something that looks good. Let's zoom out and double check our work. So this area still needs to be cleaned up a little bit. So I'm gonna try Content Aware. I'm gonna make a selection and then hit Shift Delete or Shift Backspace. It'll pull up this Fill menu. I'll select Content Aware. And for the opacity, I'm gonna try lowering it to about 70%. I'll zoom out. I think that, that works. Okay, so now let's remove these toothpicks right here. I'm gonna start by removing it where it just needs to be pink in the background. So I'm gonna select it all the way up to here. And now once again, I'm just gonna use the clone stamp tool to remove that and just be left with the pink background. Perfect. And now along the edge, I'm just gonna pull a selection from the edge over here, I think. And then I'm gonna make sure it lines up pretty good. Let's try that again. brush is a little too big. Let's try a smaller brush. All right. All right, I think that's looking pretty good. I'm just gonna continue cleaning this up with the clone stamp tool. I'm just gonna sample from different areas because there's all sorts of different yellow type colors in here that I just don't want it to be all sampled from one area. 
So I'm just gonna hold Option and click at different areas to get a variety of different colors. We can go and remove this spot here too. Okay, onto this one. Let's see, clean that up. Let's just try this. All right, just continue. The clone stamp tool works really well here for this kind of uh, texture. And then once again, I'm gonna use the lasso tool. Select the toothpick up to the edge and clean this up a little bit. I'm gonna increase the mask, hold shift, or hold option or alt to make the mask smaller. Let's try that. I'm gonna try content aware. So shift delete or shift backspace. And make the opacity 100% and click okay. And that's looking pretty good. I can just touch up the edge here. I think I'm gonna to switch to the, uh, the clone stamp tool. S on the keyboard to switch. Okay, that's looking better. And over here, I think that's fine. I might use the clone stamp tool just to touch that up a little bit more. All right, let's zoom out and take a look. All right, that's looking pretty good. We have the fishing line removed and the toothpicks removed. So um, in the final image, we just had a completely pink background and we removed that white table. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So as always, there's a few different ways we can go about removing this dowel. Uh, since there is a hard edge along here that I wanna make sure I don't brush outside the lines, I'm gonna go ahead and start by drawing a marquee mask using the lasso tool along the edge and all the way down to there. And now I can just use the clone stamp tool again and I'm gonna increase the size and pull from over here and start painting. All right. Once you get over to the white edge, just pull a new source for your brush and paint away. Now let's deselect the mask by hitting Command or Control D. And we can see when we zoom out, we do have kind of this hard edge here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna increase the size of this brush, but I'm gonna lower the flow to around 50%. And that's just going to make it a little, it's not gonna make it as strong. So when you are stamping over it, it's just gonna be a softer, um, not as a hard of a stamp. So it'll help blend things in better. All right, let's just do a few more here. Okay, <clears throat> I think that's looking pretty good. Okay, so now let's take a look at another example. Here we obviously need to remove the fishing line. We also need to extend the background because as you can see, we have all these tripod legs and um, it's only covering just a little bit of the pineapple's background. Let's start by removing the fishing line the same way as before. I'm gonna use the spot healing brush. Okay, so we have some fishing line overlapping some of the pineapple leaves. So I'm gonna clean this up. I'm gonna start by using the lasso tool and just selecting the part where it's just gonna be that white background. And then I'm just gonna pull, using the clone stamp tool, I'm just gonna pull from over here and paint over it. And then we can deselect it using Command or Control D and then just fix up any blemishes. All right, and since these leaves have so much texture to them um, and they have different coloration, it can be a little tricky. This is where it gets kind of time consuming. Um, so I'm gonna use a combination of clone stamp and spot healing brush uh, to really clean this up. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed through this. Okay, now that the fishing line is mostly removed, I'm gonna work on this stray bottom leaf that's kind of poking out and kind of being distracting. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna use Content Aware. So I'm gonna start by using the Lasso tool and make a selection like so. Now, if we just use normal Content Aware, let's take a look at what happens. All right, good, but not great. We still have this kind of phantom stamp here. So in order to make Content Aware work a little bit better, we're gonna to go to Edit, Content Aware Fill. This is an instance where the newer versions of Photoshop have this feature and the older ones do not. So I'm gonna start by painting over 
the parts that I don't want to be included in the content aware. So I just want it to be a white background. So I'm gonna remove all this pineapple so it won't pull from that when it's um, algorithmically deciding what gets included in content aware. So now I just have all this green area for it to sample from and I'm gonna hit okay. And there, we can see it worked a lot better. And we can just touch this up. Probably the clone stamp tool will work really well here. Just make that edge look a little bit, little bit more natural. It's always important to zoom out when you're working on stuff like this to make sure everything still looks good, that the colors um, are looking natural. Because when you're zoomed in really close, it can be easy to get lost in it and not have any perspective. So keep zooming in and out and make sure everything's looking good. Okay, so now you can see that this pineapple has a lot of blemishes from where the spray paint didn't totally cover it. It's also been a few days, so the pineapple's starting to kind of die out on us and kind of rot. So um, we're gonna try to clean this up a little bit. Uh, with, these, with these blemishes, with the paint, that's pretty easy to do. I'm just gonna use clone stamp tool once again and fill that in. We just wanna make sure it's still like keeping the same um, texture that the, the leaf has on it. We don't wanna lose any of that texture. We wanna keep the direction going the same way. Once again, this part gets pretty tedious, so let's just fast forward on through this. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at what we've done before and after, and that was all just with the clone stamp tool. You can go as crazy as you want with touching things up, but for this video, I'm gonna go ahead and stop there, and now we're gonna work on extending the background. Once again, there's several different ways to accomplish this, uh, but my favorite way uh, for something like this where there's not a lot of texture in the background is to use the Content Aware Scale tool. Okay, so now I have my uh, touch-ups on one layer, and I have the other work I did on this layer, and so I'm gonna merge the two. I'm gonna hit Command-Shift-E, and that's gonna just flatten them into one layer. And now I'm gonna use the marquee tool and select the top part that I wanna extend vertically. And I'm gonna to go to edit, content aware of scale. As you can see, it's just gonna fill up anywhere I drag it to using content aware and scaling that selection I made. To enter and see how it looks, not bad. Now let's go ahead and extend it horizontally. I'm gonna hold shift, so it'll just go in, in the one direction that I pull. And hit enter. And command D to deselect. Looking good, and I'm gonna do the same on this side. Edit content aware scale, hold shift, pull it out. Go ahead and hit enter. And then we'll do the same thing here on the bottom. So it's looking really good. It just needs some touch-ups along the lines here and down over here. I think a soft clone stamp brush should do a good job with that. I'm gonna lower the opacity to 50 as well and make it nice and big. Just paint over that just to smooth things out. All right, so we just simply extended the background using Content Aware Scale. If you wanna learn more about it, we do have a whole video on that, which we'll put the link for in the description. So we've been using LG monitors for years, and one of my favorite things that they came out with more recently is the on-screen controls. So we can easily choose arrangements of different split-screen orientations, so we can multitask, have different windows open, and all laid out and snapped together so it's really clean, and you can see your work side by side. It's really cool. The reason why we use monitors like this Nano IPS LG one is for its color accuracy. A lot of times when we're editing photos on our laptop without a monitor attached, we post them to Instagram, the colors look a lot different than what we thought they would. We can connect this 31 and a half inch monitor to our laptop using just a Thunderbolt 3 cable and it's gonna charge it as well. And don't forget, this monitor won best photo monitor for 2019 by Tippa. That means it's the real deal, Neil. Let's take a look at some of the before and afters.
All right, there you have it. I hope you found this video to be helpful. If you wanna see us post more Photoshop tutorials, let us know in the comments below. Like this video, subscribe if you haven't yet, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out when we post, and we'll see you in the next one.